Let's take a look at the solution for question three of the practice midterm exam for math 1220 here. Suppose that 16 foot pounds of work is needed to stretch a spring from its natural length of 12 inches to 18 inches. How much work is required to stretch the spring from 18 inches to 24 inches? So we get a spring question going on here, and at some point we're gonna have to use Hooke's law, right? The force to hold a spring extended beyond its equilibrium is going to be k times x here, where x equals the distance beyond equilibrium. So some things we notice here is that the, the natural length of the spring is 12 inches, so that's our equilibrium. That's what we mean here by x equals zero. Um, some other things we should point out is that work here is being measured in foot pounds and force will be measured in pounds, right? And so because we're measuring things in foot pounds, we do need to convert things into feet. So by 12 inches, we really mean it's a foot. And here, 18 inches, right? Um, 18 inches would be one and a half feet, but we have to think of beyond equilibrium. 18 inches is actually six inches beyond equilibrium, so that's a half foot. So this represents x equals 0.5. That's probably one of the most confusing parts, I think, about this problem. And so later on, we're gonna stretch the spring from 18, right, which was x equals 0.5 feet, to 24 inches, which would be x equals one. So that's, that's something to keep track of here. Now notice the other thing we, know, we have here is that it's a, we're told to suppose that 16 foot-pounds of work is necessary to stretch. You have to be very careful here, right? Force is required to hold the spring stretched, but work um, is required to extend the spring. So we're actually told this, the work here, and you can see this from the, the, note, from the, the units here. Foot-pounds describes work, Pounds describes force here. So what we're seeing here is the following information. It takes 16 foot-pounds of work to extend it from zero to 0.5, and this will be kx dx. That's what we have right here. So our first goal is to identify the spring constant for which when you take the antiderivative, you'll get kx squared over two as you go from zero to one half or 0.5, whichever you prefer. Uh, plugging that in there, you're going to k over 2 times 1 half squared. This is going to give us k over 8. This is equal to 16. Times in both sides by 8, you're going to get k equals 16 times 8, uh, which that's going to be 32, 64, 128. That's our spring constant, uh, this k equals 128. So now what we have to answer is the work, the work associated from integrating from 1 half to one, this 128x dx, for which case we're gonna see that when you take the antiderivative, you're gonna get 64x squared as you go from one half to one. Uh, plugging the numbers in there, 64 times, you're gonna get a one squared, which is one, minus a one half squared, which is one fourth. One take away a fourth is three fourths. Um, four goes into 64 16 times, so we get 64 times three, uh, which should then give us a 48 foot-pounds, which then gives us answer F right here. So on this example, like all spring examples, using Hooke's Law over here, we need to identify what is the spring constant. On some of the story problems we saw in the homework, uh, they tell you the force to hold it extended beyond equilibrium. So then you would use the force function to solve for K. In this example, though, we were told how much work it was required to stretch it. So we actually started with the integral of kx. So do be, be pay very close attention to the distinction. I knew this was work, one, because it told me it was work, but also because the measurements was in foot pounds. That's a measurement of work. If we use scientific units, force would be measured in newtons, but work would be measured in joules, which, of course, is a newton meter.